episode of the Press Rewind Prince Lyrics Podcast, my guest, Todd Sanzone, and I cover the final B-side from Around the World in a Day era. Girl. That's the name of the song, at least. And it's not the it's not the first song that Prince has recorded with the title Girl. He gave one to the time, and now he's keeping one for himself. So welcome back to the show, Todd. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, of course. Always happy to have you. We talked about another B-side last time we were um you know we were talking prince lyrics and that was for another lonely christmas so that's right you got me on the quirky (laughs) b-sides yeah we got the quirky (laughs) b-sides so with the around the world in a day album being that that the single releases varied from country to country or region to region so like in america we didn't get paisley park as an officially released single where Uh europe and the rest of the world i believe did america was the song that had the b-side for for girl but over in europe this was the b-side to pop life which was the last single released off of the album we got america um europe got pop life um we you know we didn't get paisley park they did so it's just one of those weird quirks like if you buy this uh if you buy the pop life single outside of the united states or north america i think it was just north america you're going to see girl on the B side of that, as opposed to it being on the B side to America here in North America. So the thing about girl is that it's, it's one, it's a song that actually has a a very old recording. Well, varies relative term when it comes to Prince, but when you think about how much music he recorded between the time that he made this song, which was sometime in like spring, summer of 1982, Mm-hmm. to when he actually put it on a b-side that's three years which doesn't sound like a lot but in in prince world that's like three albums you know <laughs> right <laughs> and a ton of b-sides since then so it does yep. feel like it's a much older song when you're when you're reading about it but listening to it it fits right in at least it fits right in with the vibe and the mood of around the world in a day to me at least i mean what do you what do you think about a uh, girl as a B-side to around the world in a day instead of, you know, as part of an era that it was at the time recorded around um, the 1999 era. I, you know, I don't disagree, although uh, knowing that it's it's an older song almost has changed my mind. Um, I think it's, you know, it is a little out of place in this era for me. It always kind of has been. I think it's just less less out of place for the era than it is out of place as a b-side to america Mm -hmm. it's an it's an odd choice for a b-side to a 21 minute jam full full band jam you know what i mean so yeah um i think in that respect it's always been out of place for me and um, i can certainly hear it more as an earlier song than i can something recorded along the you know low lines in this at the same in the same timeline as some of these others but um but then again, you know, there's some, you know, as I'm listening to it again in preparation for our conversation and looking at the lyrics, I do see some tie-ins to um, some album track stuff. So from around the world day, so it's not altogether out of place. Yeah, I think musically, I mean, it doesn't have a full band sound because it wasn't a full band that recorded it. It was just Prince, sure. um, which vibes with what he how he recorded most of 1999. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, there's not the collaboration that you saw in some of the songs on Around the World in a Day with, um, like, Wendy and Lisa or different affiliates that he brought in to help out. And the other thing that kind of brings it back and ties it back to an earlier era is the presence of, of Vanity on this song. Uh-huh. Uh, she has backing vocals. I mean, they're they're not easy to hear. Every once in a while in the song, you'll hear, like, what sounds like two voices and sometimes that's just prince and prince um but sometimes i think it's prince and vanity and when it's a much more feminine voice and it's not prince doing a falsetto i hear i hear her in some lines on this song and when we talk a little bit more about the lyrics and then also talk a little bit about the 12 inch extended version of this song i think the vanity connection is clear but um you know before calling before we started talking today and calling in today for this for this recording uh we were messaging back and forth a little bit about the 12 inch version Uh and i had mentioned to you that you know my only copy of this was on vinyl so it wasn't something i could easily 
listen to on the move. <laughs> I mean, I had to be standing right. next to my record player. <laughs> and uh, so it's not a, it's not the version that I hear the most. Mostly when I hear this version, it's going to be the, the, the B-sides, B-sides mm-hmm. from 1993. I mean, I do have the 45 now, but that was, you know, I bought that way after the fact. So my first <laughs> hearing of the song was on that um, Hits and B-sides collection from 93. Uh, when was your first time hearing it, Todd? Back when it was released. I have the nice. original 12 sing- inch <laughs> single. Yep. yep. So, yeah, I've had that as a proud piece of my collection for, for a long time. Oh, um, hell yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it's one of those things that I, you know, I've had it for a long time, but it's not something I go back and listen to very often. Um, you know, even though now I have it readily accessible on my, on my phone anytime I want to hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I've had it for a long time. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it was buried on the B-Sides collection. Uh, it, for me, it kind of got lost a little bit with some of the what I consider more superior B-Sides. Now, this song is generally uh, well-received and considered a, a, a very good B-Side for Prince. But when you stack it, for me at least, when you stack it up against your Erotic Cities and your 17 Days and even like your Shockadelicas or She's Always in My Hair, um, How Come You Don't Call Me Anymore?, I don't know. It's 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 like the next tier for me. Uh, yeah, it's I it's agree. a it's a nice song. It's very pleasant to to listen to. I, I like the what what I what I kind of call like almost like this thumping heartbeat sound. Mm, you know, yep, it follows the the entire um, song. Like it's just always in the background. Boom, 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 boom. And I describe it kind of like a heartbeat sound, but it's, it's you know it's just like a synth line. Yeah drum drum beat you know synth and drum beat pattern that's just being repeated throughout so it's musically pretty simple it's got that kind of poppy do 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 that also follows the music and so for me those are the aspects that are i think of the most when i hear this song i think we also maybe uh you might be on the same page as me when talking about the lyrics to girl i can't say that that's something that i ever really kind of focused on with this it's always been about the melody it's always been about the beat and um and that's it you know it was just kind of a pleasant hook in the background i didn't think too much about it didn't really dissect it (laughs) in my brain right certainly never thought you know like i was going to dissect it for a podcast at some future point but here (laughs) we are today doing that so that's that was always my impression of girl um do you feel the same way or do you really like this song even more than i do no, I no, we we agree. I think it's um, it's it's a ple- like you said, it's a pleasant listen. Uh, I I like it when it comes on. It's not something I seek out very often, um, but yeah, you, and you're right about that synth, um, that synth beat, that that heartbeat sound. It's great, um, yeah. and that hook, that little high synth hook, um, that comes back around uh, over and over. It's that's great too. That's that's what drives the song. Uh, lyrically, it's just. Um, it's a bit of whimsy and it's a bit of uh, uh, just, just on un- just below the level of, you know, eroticism. That's something like do me baby or um, international lover or something like that might invoke. Uh, instead, it's a little bit sweeter, but still kind of along those lines. You know? mm-hmm. What I also found interesting when I was doing some research on the song before we get into the lyrics is that, Prince never played this live until 2007, like his yep. first time ever recording. And I'm sure you probably saw the same thing when you were doing research. Yep. Is that he did not play this song live until 2007, so 22 years after it was released. Uh, you know, 25 years after it was recorded initially. I mean, I know that according to Prince Vault, it was recorded in '82, and then there was some maybe. <laughs> it's pretty vague as far as like what was actually what Prince actually did mm-hmm. to the song to prepare it for release in 85, but it looks like there was maybe some, some additional, whatever, I don't know, done in 85 to, to get it ready for the B side to America or slash pop life. Um, but I think, uh, and, you know, and it wasn't included on any kind of 1999 super deluxe edition. So we never got like the original vault version. Right. I, I imagine if it ever sees the light of day or if it's even significantly different enough to make it worth our time, or worth the stage time, it would, it would show up on like an around the world in a day um, collection. But but it was really recorded in the 1999 era, so I'm not sure 
if it's even going to unearth itself at some point, what yeah. that original 82 version was like. It's probably very similar to what we ended up getting. My guess is you're correct, and so you know maybe we'll see it on around the world in the day to you know Super Deluxe if we ever get that. As far as the as the live performance in 2007 goes, there's no mention, uh, in a, and I wonder if anybody out there listening would happen to know. But in what form did this present itself at the show? I mean, was it a, just a snippet? Did he play a verse in the chorus? I mean, how much of the song actually got, uh, you know, got shared with the audience that day? I wonder. Yeah, good question. Good question. Because he was known to just kind of uh, take some of his older songs and do like a medley or, yeah. you know, really truncate versions of them to blend into something else. Uh, is it like an intro or outro? So, yeah, it's, it'd be interesting. Like, did he just play the whole thing mm-hmm. or shits and giggles or <laughs> or was it really just that? Like, I kind of, you know, want to pull this old song out of out of my bag of tricks and see right. what kind of reaction I get. And, oh, okay, the crowd loved it. So I'm going to continue playing this live periodically now for the rest of my career. So right. just kind of what he did. And another thing I'll mention, right, since you brought it up, um, as far as doing the research and, you know, facts about the recording of the song and the fact that it was, you know, originally from 82 sometime, we don't know when. I reached out to um, Dwayne Tudal. Cool. And to see if he had maybe some information tucked away about the recording of the song. And he didn't have anything accessible in the, in the moment. And so whether or not he comes back with some more stuff, I don't, you know, we'll see. But in the moment, he, he and I traded messages and he said that he believes, uh, and again, this is probably speculation too, so I don't want to attribute it, this straight up to Dwayne as if this is knowledge, but he, he said he believes that this was actually originally written for Vanity Six, and the song mm-hmm. was called Boy. And so in changing the song, he made it into Girl, um, you know, when, whether he changed the song and recorded it himself as girl in 82 or whether that was the change he made later unclear um and what we hear in the song i don't unlike you i don't hear vanity's voice as a main background vocal in the song what i hear is the backwards playing um that's mentioned um on prince vault as well um, at about the three, let's see, I, I made a note of, of this, about the 3.30 mark in the song, um, both in the uh, edit, the single edit and in the long version, you can hear pretty clearly the back backward vocal of her apparently reciting the lyrics to Boy. Mm-hmm. So anyway, and it continues, of course, the, the, the uh, single edit ends pretty soon thereafter, but the longer version goes on and you can hear it pretty clearly. But anyway, so I thought that mentioning as well that's how that's how Dwayne frames it as an actual uh, vanity six song with a different title but otherwise probably the same yeah yeah I, so maybe that's what's what will be unearthed someday is yeah the original recording of boy that included vanity's vocals because obviously there was a version if it was played backwards behind girl you know what i mean so there's got to be there's got to be a version out there somewhere that that was used to right. place on the the back you know, in the back masking part of uh, this song. So maybe we'll get it. And maybe the music's more or less the same, if not identical. I can see that. It sounds, it's like, it's kind of got that fun poppy vibe that a lot of Vanity Six songs had. Well, I mean, they only had the one album, but, you know, like the whole girl groups stuff that he was doing from, you know, 82 to 84 with Apollonia and Vanity. So mm-hmm. I can I can definitely see this song musically being a Vanity Six song. You know, it didn't didn't have like um, you know the lyrics aren't well. If the lyrics were the similar, <laughs> you know, as we'll talk about, this is like a very double entendre filled song mm-hmm. from a lyrical standpoint. And now that you mention that, and I don't I don't want to spend the entire episode talking about mm, could this have worked as right. a man singing and a woman singing or is this only you know going to work if you're thinking of as a man singing about a woman uh-huh. uh, but it, there might be times where we think about the lyrics and think okay would this have worked if it was if the genders were switched and this was a woman singing a song called boy and you just basically only changed you know mentions of girl to boy and everything else stays the same I'd be interesting to know that 
So I might, I might keep it in the back of my mind as we go through lyrics and this maybe point out, and you can do the same if you want. Sure. Point out times where, like, mm, that wouldn't work, or that would sound odd, or, boy, that that's written brilliantly, because how it's phrased is completely gender neutral to the point where uh, it could it could work either way. So, huh. nice little uh, tidbit of, of trivia there to um, whet our appetite as we go through the, the lyrics. Indeed. So the song um, is very much, as it's written, about, you know, it's sung by a boy about a girl. <laughs> pretty, pretty clearly stated there in, in the name of the title and also in the chorus, which is just girl. Uh, so you just kind of, I get the kind of impression that he's wooing somebody. You know, Prince is um, singing the song to, like, you know, a beautiful stranger or somebody he's just recently met. Just essentially trying to get her attention and trying to... Uh, sleep with her essentially that's mm. that's what i'm getting from this because it's pretty sexually charged throughout yeah so the first verse is girl you excite me so Ooh wee baby your body's like no other girl it's you i gotta know Ooh wee baby i bet you're quite a lover Ooh girl i want to take you home Ooh wee baby you're dreaming i scream inside you i want you in the worst way you make me and then it goes into the chorus girl and that's repeated twice. So in this first verse, like I said, it's kind of expressing uh, a sense of physical attraction. You know, he mentioned several times, you know, it's very, it seems very physical due to lines like, your body's like no other. I bet you're quite a lover. That's something that, you know, you would say if you're physically attracted to somebody, you're not necessarily, you know, mentally stimulated. <laughs> you don't really talk necessarily about um, sex on the first date if you're really just kind of in that zone of, Mental stimulation, this just feels like it's very um, physically motivated. Dreaming, I scream inside you. I mean, that's a double entendre there. Uh -huh. um, is that, that kind of what you get from the first verse? It's very physical. It's very lusty. <laughs> of course. Yeah, that's it. I mean, and the, the one line that stands out there, there to me, which differs, I think, from the rest of the song, unless I find a, another line like it, is I bet you're quite a lover because... It implies that he hasn't gone there yet. They haven't mm -hmm. done it yet. He's he's speculating that she's a lover. So um, the rest of the song kind of speaks to me of familiarity. Like they're already together, and he's just uh, they're just having a, a fun night together, and he's trying to woo her all over again. But it's not exactly new. But this is this one line tells me it's it's new. Yeah, you're right. It does. Uh, I bet you're quite a lover. Exactly. That's that's a line that, like you said, implies um, that they they have not slept together, that they have not uh, been carnal. So it's it's, but it's interesting because this this first verse is probably the most I don't know uh, safe. Um, I mean, yeah, the last line he starts he starts veering towards uh, more explicit descriptions of his arousal with you're dreaming i scream inside you that prior to that it's just very like oh hey baby you're so hot um <laughs> you know i want to take mm. you but then he says that and it's it's like automatically uh ramps up the eroticism a bit and that from then on it kind of stays on that plane that same plane of eroticism with the with the lyrics which you know if you're trying to woo somebody that you've never been with, you might want to tone it down a little bit, <laughs> unless, unless that's your mo, and that's you know how, and it's worked for you in the past. You know, you've got your game, and that's your game. Um, but if it's not, you know, and if you're not getting the right vibes from this woman, that it's cool to talk to her like this, then you're gonna want to tone it down a little bit. But he doesn't do that, <laughs> as we'll find out later in the song. He doesn't tone right. it down. A little, little commentary, and this always kind of I find funny when you look up different sources of lyrics to try to match it up with what you're hearing, right? Uh -huh. So uh -huh. one of the, um, the sources that I pulled online, uh, and it was just a front, straight from Google search. It wasn't even from a website. Um, the la and I'm spinning it forward now, but the last line of the song, which pairs up with this line, Ooh, wee baby, I, uh, you dream I scream inside you. They take those words, and it's quoted that way in the first verse, but in the last verse, they quote that line as, 
you like the dreamy ice cream. Now, I don't know if that's... <laughs> so it, so, is, so does that mean the lyrics in this opening uh, verse could be your dreamy ice cream? I don't know. No, no, no. I think it's your dream ice cream inside you. But, <laughs> but I got a question when I read Good that. Good question. Mm -hmm. That is one of those things that one has to consider when you're talking about lyrics to a song that doesn't have official printed lyrics <laughs> right. in the album because uh, that, was a, that was something that I discovered early on with um, Soft and Wet. You know, a well-known right. song, but all of the lyrics transcribed to Soft and Wet on the internet were wrong until somebody kind of corrected me after I recorded my episode. And I'm like, well, damn, why? So I think just people type them up and then, then it's just a whole bunch of copy and pastes into their own lyric website. Occasionally you'll get one that differs, but Sometimes wrong information just gets copy, just like in real Jason life. Jason and know. everybody listening out there, let this be a lesson to you. You can't believe everything you read on the internet. Exactly. Like if you're just <laughs> gonna go to like Wikipedia and, and claim that as being like fact mm -hmm. when you're trying to cite something, you you, know, you didn't want to check a few other sources first because uh, we all know that anybody could put down on their lyric website what the lyrics are, don't make it right. So yeah. Yeah, interesting. I'll be I'll be uh, intrigued if we find out any more about that, or if anybody else has any opinions about. I hear what your what the lyrics on the site that I'm using. Yeah, I hear that, but I didn't realize that um, there was other sites out there that said something different. So thanks for bringing that up. Sure. All right. So then the second verse is, "Girl, won't you kiss me? Ooh, baby, my lips they want you so. Girl, how can you resist me?" The smell of animal lust is all, all over me. Oh, girl, if I could hold your hand, I'd make you touch my body until you understand. I'm your man. All night, all day. I want you in the worst way. You make me. In the second verse, um, I mean, it's it takes some, to me, it takes some cues from the first verse with some innocence. Like, oh, won't you kiss me? My lips want you so. How can you resist me? And it goes back into the whole lustful side, the smell of animal lust all over me. And then talks about holding hands, which is a sweet, sweet notion. But then it's like, I want, if I could hold your hand and make you touch my body until you understand. So he's like, <laughs> going to take her hand and like put it on him. And you, can imagine, and you can imagine where he's placing her hand in that uh, wording. I mean, I guess it could be anywhere. Maybe it's my own dirty mind. Sorry, folks. But <laughs> I think of something else. I think of somewhere else he's placing her hand. Um, I thought he would place it on her heart, Jason. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, okay. Sorry. I guess I'm, I, I must have bought a dirty mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so second verse, Todd. Uh, yes. What, what do you like out of this, this grouping of lines? Um. All of it. I mean, the, the one that <laughs> jumps out to me it, that makes a connection for me to an album track is The Smell of Animal Lust is All Over Me. Yep. And that is temptation, you know, done in a little sweet way, maybe. But still, that's uh, that's the tie-in for me, right, um, to the album. So, yeah, the rest, I'll make you touch my body until you understand I'm your man. That, and that's, that's the line that uh, maybe for me makes me feel like you know, they're already together. Um, and he's just trying to, you know, uh, reiterate that he's he's hers and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And make you touch my body until you understand I'm your man. So, yeah, I mean, you, you can interpret it either way. You still interpret those lines to him just being really kind of aggressive. Uh -huh. uh, if, if she isn't somebody that he's been with or, you know, has, uh, that they've had some sort of prior connection so if he really is just trying to woo her with this line, it's a pretty, it's, it's, he's coming on pretty strongly, um, right. which, you know, in a song you can do that doesn't mean this is how you would actually talk to somebody you're wooing. It's just him, you know, expressing maybe what's in his head uh, in song. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's literally what he would say or is trying to imply that he's saying to her, to this woman. In this song, it could literally just be like, God, you know, this is what I would do. This is, if if my brain could talk right now, this is what it would say to you. And it's very, like, lust-driven. I mean, the smell of animal lust, as you mentioned, with the tie-in to Temptation, which is kind of funny because Temptation's last song on Around the World in a Day, and, you know, it's kind of the song where 
Prince comes to the the realization that um, love is more important than sex. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this song, having been actually written years prior, there's no there's no kind of um, uh, come to Jesus moment here. It's it's really <laughs> pretty focused on the sex, and and the lust part isn't just I lust you, but now I've got to uh, repent and I've got to. Uh, you know, confess my sins or anything like that later in the song. It's really just straightforward lust song. And that kind of, that does jive more and fit more with the narrative of, of like a 1999 album, which has a lot of, you know, very sexually charged songs. And of course there's the, the infamous um, unreleased track, Lust You Always, which was also uh. recorded. I think it was recorded in 82, maybe 83. Uh. I don't remember exactly. I'd have to go back to the Prince Vault on that one, but I'm pretty sure it was recorded around the same time, right. give or take. And so then we've got a song that's called Lust You Always that is more like this, except it's more direct even than this song. <laughs> and uh, a little less um, poppy and, and fun sounding from a musical standpoint. That's a real kind of much harder driving funk jam with you know, sex is the primary uh, lyrical topic. This is more of a I want to woo you, baby, kind of song. And I, it's just, I just find it funny because everybody makes the connection to Temptation because of the album that it came on uh-huh. and the Animal Lust. He says Animal Lust, not just Lust. So right. the two words combined are the reason why we all think of Temptation when listening to the song. Um, but but the, the tone of the song is more I think in line with songs that he was writing in 82, like Lust You Always, for example, or like Extra Lovable or, you know, um, DMSR or something like that. So Lady Cab Driver, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, anyway, yeah, that, that second verse, it's starting to kind of... Starting to rev up, starting to press. Yeah, exactly. It's revving up like <laughs> the, the sexuality to the point where you really kind of wonder, are they together or aren't they together? Yeah. And where is this going? Well, um, we're, we're about to find out. Yeah, we're about to find <laughs> out. So Prince does another spoken word section, uh, something also that was very common around this time, 82, 83. I mean, I just started off the top of my head trying to think of songs that were recorded around 82, 83, where he, where he used like the bridge to do like a spoken word section. Mm-hmm. And just without even doing any research on like beautiful ones, uh, uh, something in the water, um, automatic, uh-huh. like you know the the long version of "We Can Fuck" that ended up on the Purple Rain mm. Deluxe a few years back. Uh-huh. Um, Computer Blue Hallway Speech version. I mean, yes, that's without even doing any kind of like real digging and figuring out if there was more. I'm sure there's more. Right. So this was a pretty common um, structure trope that. Prince employed around this time to use this to kind of just to talk, talk to the listener, talk to the person who the song is about. Right. Um, and then we're kind of like the conversation, the one sided conversation, because yeah, it's always one sided in all these songs. You never hear somebody, he doesn't actually have a conversation. It's all just a lot of it's him asking questions, hypothetical questions. Another song featuring vanity as, uh, as muse and, um, background noises if nothing else uh doomy baby has the whole i don't know i can hear him saying you know oh, i'm so cold and oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, it's yeah exactly stuff. yeah so it's it's not uncommon for him to do this so i just wanted to bring that up because i think people will kind of make the connection that even though the song was a an 85 release the, the way it's structured and some of the things that we've already talked about uh-huh. do kind of point back to that brief period of time where he was really doing this a lot with his music by the way really quick i just looked up the date according to prince vault um lest you always was recorded in 82 okay so there, same no, no specific dates just 82 so there you yep. go okay that's what i thought but i didn't want to yep. i didn't want to make that a definitive statement because i might have been wrong yeah all right, so then the spoken word section, in this section he says, caress the flower, warm, warm, bring it to the garden. The garden? Be poetic. 
Tell me what it feels like. A sea of electricity? Now that's wonderful. Talk to you? Talk to you? What do you want to hear? If I was anything else, I'd be the water in your bath, darling. All right, so we've got a lot of, I think we have, not maybe not a lot, but we have several lines in this section that, you know, one can take multiple ways, the whole double entendre <laughs> again. You know, the 10-year-old the me would have been like, oh, he's talking about, you know, gardening. Um, he's talking <laughs> about... Uh, <laughs> he, he just likes, you know, really pretty flowers in his garden. Right. Uh, sure, okay. All right, fine. But it's not... Wink, it, wink, it, nudge, nudge, very, know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it may be very uh, obvious to most people what's being referred to here. Just the fact that he never comes out and even kind of says says it is not unusual he did that a lot mm -hmm. but because it's like anybody else sings these lines you you might you might have to take a pause and think like well, what are they talking about is this a metaphor for something uh, but when prince says it especially you know during his most lustful lyrical period of his career uh, you you immediately think caress the flower okay well is he talking about you know the female genitalia probably um but could this is another situation I'm like all right well if we're thinking of this being sung by a woman about a boy could this be interpreted a different way could the flower be something else could the garden be something else bring it to the garden crest the flower bring it to the garden could the flower be a penis <laughs> you know and bring it to the garden is the vagina i don't know i mean i'm just I'm just a guy looking at lines and trying right. to figure out what they are. But full disclosure, are you blushing right now? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is not this is not a visual podcast. <laughs> but I, I can paint that picture for you. Right. Um, yeah, it would be poetic. So, like, tell me what it feels like. So, yeah, at this point, you I get the impression at least, and I, I'm sure you probably do too, that they're actually having sex now. This is this is me listening in on a conversation of two people having sex now is that the only way to ter interpret these lines probably not w i mean what do you think, what do you think? Here, here's my take and it's this is just a straight ahead take and sure there's i could lean in one way or the other as you just did and it would make total sense but if i'm just full steam ahead i'm going okay yes please literally there's um uh you know he's painting a picture of uh, they're having they're having sexy time as uh as borat says mm -hmm. um but right now they're not having intercourse uh she is touching herself and he is instructing her what to do and she's asking her to tell him how it's feeling and then she's saying talk to me you know that you know again uh, just tell me more tell me more about what to do or tell me something he's like what do you want to hear and he and then he makes up the line you know, this um, over-the-top uh, kind of cheesy line, if I was anything else, I'd be the water in your bath. Uh, the line that um, I hear him saying under the cherry moon as well. Um, so, uh, the, which makes me wonder, hmm, was the re-recording of this song and the inclusion of that line uh, influential in the script of Under the Cherry Moon? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Because mm -hmm. it was the, being, being filmed around the same time, I would guess. So, anyway. So, but yeah, I think it's just... Uh, uh, you know, pretty language and, um, you know, uh, a wink and a nod, but talking about something very specific without without saying it. Yeah. Okay. I think that actually really kind of makes sense to me. When, when I'm looking at the lines now, um, I'm thinking of it as more like instructional. Mm -hmm. And it is. It's, it's direction. It's direction. And... Um, when he says, talk to you, talk to you, what do you want to hear? Yeah, now that makes sense. That makes sense now to me. Thank you for clarifying that to me. Oh, I don't know if I clarified it, but you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, to me, it kind of, well, let's just put it this way. It, it makes me think of these lines differently because I was always thinking of them like, yeah, it was instructional. It was almost like the, you know, the um, warm up part and then turned into mm -hmm. the actual part. But it could also, yeah, I mean, the way you say it, you know, if, if she's looking for him to encourage her while she's masturbating, 
she wants him to to you know talk dirty to her or say things that maybe aren't dirty that are more erotic and uh-huh. um you know sensual and whatever it is that she wants to hear basically that's what it's like what do you want to hear like what's going to help you um on this journey right so then what comes up with is you know i want to be the water in your bath <laughs> and, yeah um you know which is you know pretty and now put intimate put that- yeah, put that translation into that scene in Under the Cherry Moon where he takes the um, phone call from Mrs. Wellington and he gets in the tub and he's like, all right, hold on. And he gets in the tub and Tricky's like, oh, here we go. And he starts talking to her, sexy, sexy talk. Mm-hmm. And this is the line that he, en- I think he ends with it. It's pretty close anyway. If I was anything else, I'd be the watering room in your bath. Ciao, then he just hangs up. So assuming that he either... A, he's he's done, or B, she's done, <laughs> yeah. and his job is done because of that. So anyway, yep. it's yeah, yeah, I could totally pick, put this into that scene, and it would work. So just looking at individual lines, you know, the water in your bath, not the first, not the last uh, mm-hmm. reference to a bath bathing as um, you know foreplay, or even the act itself. I mean, we could go. We can go on for a long time talking about bath metaphors and mm-hmm. and bathing as used in uh, as sexy time description descriptors in Prince songs. There's just almost too many to even start to name. So anybody who's familiar with Prince's songs and lyrics will can point out certain songs where he talks about bathing, and even in unreleased songs, mm-hmm. uh, extra lovable, he talks about taking mm-hmm. a bath with. Don't you want to take a bath with me? You know. Well, I actually that was released later, so I keep thinking of the original eighty two <laughs> version. But no, he uses that same line in the, you know, the, the final released version uh-huh. um, as well. And of course, you know, you got um, Computer Blue. You've got uh, you know, um, the song off uh, Went to Our Love later on. Anyway, so there's just so many. You can't even talk about them all. But here's yet another one. Right. All right. Well. That was cool because now I think of those lines in a different way. Doesn't mean I'm going to ever, you know, eliminate the way that I always thought of the lines, but I do appreciate the fact that you've kind of opened my eyes to a new um, potential interpretation of the spoken word section. Because well, you're either welcome or I'm sorry. Yes, both. (laughs) (laughs) Although you know, I mean that that is a it's a very, I would say it's a very erotic um, way to think of it from that standpoint. Because it's it's also it also kind of fits a lot of Prince's narratives about really wanting the woman to be um, receiving the pleasure. You know, his concern of the woman's pleasure is very evident, at least in song. You know, multiple songs where her pleasure is of utmost importance to him, and the fact that he's basically just there to make sure that she is feeling good and you know doing whatever she needs whether it's to talk to her or you know talk talk sexy to her talk um sweet to her whatever it is that she needs to in order to get her off get herself off and that's that's why it's it doesn't surprise me if this would be kind of how he intended it because it wouldn't be unique let's just put it that way right now go into the next verse Okay, and, t- yes. and tell me what you think about this verse. Okay, so the the next verse is "Girl, girl, you excite me so, ooey baby, my flesh is on fire." Girl, girl, the way you play with it, ooey baby, I think you desire me. Girl, make a wish, baby, anything, we'll make it come true. Me and you, I want you in the worst way. You make me, ooh, girl. All right, so here he's talking about. Uh, so the lyrics here are, are less poetic, like, you know, before he's talking about be poetic uh, in the last section of the lyrics. But these are not that poetic. It's really just a lot of, like, descriptors of, uh, you know, pleasure, like, ooh, we mm-hmm. think flesh is on fire. Ooh, now that, you, you know, I, I, really quickly, sorry to interrupt. It just no, occurred no. to me that I'm happy to be on with you again. I'm happy to be discussing this song. You kind of needed a woman for this one, though. <laughs> I would have loved to hear a woman's take on this song versus mine. 
but that's okay. Here we are. Yeah, well, <laughs> I've got you, Todd. So that's all right. I'm on the phone right now. So sorry, no. uh, all you listening, you're gonna have to deal with me. Sorry, we're just gonna have to forge ahead with the, <laughs> uh, two middle-aged married men talking about. <laughs> right. <that>. Sorry, <laughs> but you, in retrospect, yes. If I ever do like a redo, yeah, I, like like I'm gonna have the time to do that with all the Prince songs that I have. To still know. <laughs> Uh, I would definitely get an alternate um, opinion on this song from a, from a woman, but nevertheless. So yeah, we have now a bunch of lines that are kind of really kind of short, and they they they're trying to be more just not so descriptive, but just kind of more blunt, like the way you play with it. I think you desire me, make a wish, make it come true. Me and you, I want that you in the worst way. Yeah, I mean, to me now, if you're thinking of that last section being her pleasuring herself with his participation, active participation, this is more of the other way around, is where I, what I get from this. My flesh is on fire. Play with it, meaning you play with me. Um, you desire me. Me and you, I want you in the worst way. So, yeah, I would say it's the, it's the flip side. It's reciprocation. What do you think? I disagree. Awesome, okay. What do you think? So, at the risk of sounding, uh, you know, argumentative or just... Um you know, playing the other side. I still think she's diddling herself. I still think, um, you know, he's getting, but he's getting turned on now. I mean, she's turning herself on and she's being helped along with that by what he's telling her to do and what he's saying to her. But now he's getting turned on too by watching her the way you play with it. I think it is still her. And the fact that I think she's getting ramped up a little bit more and it's clear to him that she she wants it now she wants to do more than just touch herself right so and here's something i don't know if anybody would would take take this away or not maybe i'm just being a little bit too literal but when he says make a wish baby think about the female anatomy and then think about a wishbone okay all right so if she's making a wish she could be you're just ready to go and and those two that visual comes alive for me with how the anatomy looks so anyway so i think she's still with herself and i think he's just getting ramped up as well right along with her so there you go there's my take that absolutely 100 percent works and that's that's you know i was thinking this song wasn't going to be that deep <laughs> i'll just be very uh, honest with you i thought like this is just going to be a sex song and it's going to be pretty straightforward he wants this girl etc cetera, etc cetera. but now that we're talking through this the, these lines are very cleverly written to not only be because this 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 works as a woman singing this or a man singing this. Uh-huh. Boy, you excite me so. My flesh is on fire. Boy, the way you play with it. I think you desire me. Boy, make a wish, baby. Anything will make it come. You know, I mean, it it it's not so. Um, black and white it's not so specific that you can only attribute it to just one thing and mm-hmm. one act or you know one um gender it's it's very vaguely written to to kind of really um i think work either way and whether that was intentional like prince thought like ah, i'd like to be able to sing this as girl or boy or it was just a happy accident when they wrote this song, and if it was originally for Vanity Six and it was written this way, it's like, oh crap, you know, I must have been on a different level when I wrote this song because I can switch boy to girl and everything works perfectly. Or you know, I might have to change one word or something like that. I don't right. Know. But yeah, that's um, that that really kind of paints a different picture as well. So whether or not you want to interpret this this whole middle section of the song as basically being one big solo adventure that Prince is encouraging to get her excited to be with him or if it's a back and forth thing or if it's all just you know in his head uh, this is this is what he was he's hoping and wanting her to be like when they're together uh-huh. that's a lot of different angles to, to kind of look at these lyrics so that is pretty cool that's pretty cool. And that's why, you know, having a guest on is invaluable. Yeah. yeah, it's a different perspective. And it's yeah, certainly... You could have um, two more guests on and they'd have a totally different perspective. Possibly. Possibly. Because we 
there's like I said, I just we just barely kind of scratched the surface in terms of like could this even be you know more out there in terms of like what's happening. We're looking at it from like an encounter, like an actual encounter perspective, and how that could be looked at as two different things. How it could be her or him, um, and what's what's happening? Why are the questions? It's because they're actually engaging in intercourse this time, or is it is it uh, foreplay, or is it just solo play that's um, you know being participated with two people? So yeah, it's a lot, a lot of stuff going on in a song that's seemingly very, very simple. Uh-huh. Okay, so then if we move on from there, after that, it's just um, pretty much a lot of the same lyrics. It says "girl" again, a couple more times, and then he in the outro of the the seven inch version, "You like the dreaming ice cream." So that's in the version of the lyrics I'm looking at. It's still dreaming and scream, not ice cream. <laughs> um, and he says, "Girl, your lips are so wet." Double entendre there, of course. Uh, and this is also a little bit of a flip there with lips, because he mentions lips earlier in the song, but he's talking about his lips. He says, my lips, they want you so. And then here, you know, he talks about your lips are so wet. Okay. I think we can, you know, paint a picture in our mind what he's talking about. If, yes. if that's indeed what he's talking about. I mean, once yeah. again, it could, it could just be her mouth. I mean, I don't. we don't have to go to the X-rated version, but <laughs> it's sometimes easy to do um, when we're talking prints. But feel my hands are all sweaty. So uh, with, this, with that line, again, is he asking her to feel his hands as they're out in public and he's talking to her, trying to woo her still? Or is this now, you know, kind of a follow the path after what happened with the section we just talked about and you know he's all hot and bothered so to speak oh. now his hands are sweaty don't know nope either way either way works either way works all right so um we'll talk about the 12 inch all right yeah. so let's do that let's do that so then after that we find the section of lyrics that take over from there because it, correct me if I'm wrong, Todd. So that's where the, that's where the seven inch fades out. That's where it ends, and when it fades, you can't even hear the last line. I mean, it just, it's faded. At least I couldn't. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so but yes, that's where it fades, okay. and then um, yeah, and then it's it's interesting to note for whatever it's worth the the twelve inch is four minutes longer than the edit. So there's more than twice so, as much song in the twelve inch. Mm-hmm. And and most of that is just a continuation of the same, you know, musical pattern, and Prince talking. Yes. Right. Yes. And uh, yeah, exactly. So Prince is saying these lyrics, and keep in mind, I'll read them. But keep in mind, in the background, you have like this kind of, I don't know, not spooky, but you know, anytime somebody's talking backwards, it sounds a little right. eerie. And you've got uh, a woman talking backwards behind this and that is that's what we referenced earlier that's um yep boy by vanity uh in the background backwards so i guess you know the way it was described online is boy starts at the very end of girl and then it's played backwards until it ends sometime midway through the song right all right so the next grouping of lines which go which in the 12 inch are just all together with what we just talked about faded out so after he says Feel my hands are all sweaty. I don't know. I guess you frightened me. Because I've never wanted anyone like this before. To feel this way, it's like, I don't know, it's like a sin. Because sometimes I feel bad. Sometimes I want you so much, I can... God, all I have to do is think about you and I can have an orgasm. That sounds funny, doesn't it? Haha, <laughs> marry me. Yeah, that's right, marry me. <clears throat> so I'm going to stop there because um, there's enough lines there to kind of parse through. But... <laughs> All right, so you're you have more familiarity with the twelve inch version than I do. You've listened to it longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've had it digitally <laughs> uh, for longer. So, I mean, what do you like about this? What do, what are you kind of like highlighting here as interesting or unique aspects of the lines? You know, the, the, and this is more Prince talking about the, turning turning the the lens on himself a little bit, talking about his feelings. Um, talking about um, you know, like he's being sinful. He's never wanted anything, anyone like this before. Uh, talking about being frightened. 
Sometimes he feels bad. So he's turning the lens around a little bit, focusing on himself. And the other thing I'll point out, and I kind of highlight the line because it sticks out for a reason, but also because of its connotation, uh, girl, God, all I have to do is think about you and have an orgasm, right? So um, to, in, in listening to it again in preparation for our, our talk, this whole piece and, and what comes after reminds me of If I Was Your Girlfriend, another song that sort of ends with a spoken piece where he's putting out his feelings for uh, for his woman and making making it clear and really wearing his heart on his sleeve. So, um, and of course, tying in sex to it, you know, as Prince always does, or most often does. So anyway, so there's a, there's that little lyrical connection for me in terms of um, the thematic um, and tonal uh, connection to if I was your girlfriend for me. Yeah, yeah, that's a good call. It's a good call, and yeah, of course, the all I have to do is think about you and have an orgasm is certainly a line that sticks out to anybody listening to it because you're just like, oh, wow, he's really into her. Mm. Then the whole uh, ending it with marry me, yeah, that's right, marry me. So this whole marriage theme, once again, if you're just thinking the songs that were written around 82, 83, you've got references to marry a marriage and let's pretend we're married, of course. Mm. And then if you've got the line in um, uh, The Beautiful Ones. Well, if you got married, wouldn't that be cool? And those references to marriage always kind of seemed a little uh, trite or, you know, maybe a little insincere Uh uh, because of how, you know, it sounds insincere and let's pretend we're married because it just sounds like he wants to marry a woman just so he can fuck her. And then with um, the beautiful ones, it's almost like he's using marriage as a, you know, manipulative tool uh to try to get to win her back like you know i love you so much let's get married even though you get the impression that she's not even with him in that song uh so you know the marry me part in this song it's it's a little jarring if you're just unless you're thinking of this song it's like a story like if you're talking thinking of it like as a as a story of how two people met fell in love had an amazing sex life and then got married (laughs) (laughs) or, or it's just him being so overwhelmed in the moment, which is kind of how I think of it, you know, and just like this grand gesture of, I just had like this amazing experience with you. I love you so much. I want to marry you when really it's more just, I'm euphoric, you know, in my post orgasmic bliss and my brain isn't quite firing on all cylinders and i'm just thinking like i want to i want this to uh, happen over and over and over and over so you know just something a little more um fleeting or uh what's the word i'm looking for something that's i don't know a bit more impulsive i guess cool. when it's really not <laughs> in uh, the right frame of mind you would think back like ooh, yeah maybe we're not quite ready for marriage yet who knows but yeah, those are lines I like about that section. Um, to feel way, I don't know, it's like a sin. That's kind of a, goes back to a little bit of his um, guilt about sex. Uh-huh. He expresses around this time. Or, I don't know, maybe in his entire career, if you really think about it. But there's there's a bit, especially in this time, we have a lot of examples of of Prince feeling a little bit guilty about his, his lustful nature and his lustful lyrics. And um, this is falls in line with that you know to to feel this good maybe it's not right um maybe i'm maybe i'm a sinner because of that if if you know you've been brought up in a um you know with a with a religion that frowns on premarital sex or you know having enjoying sex too much outside of the institute of marriage so Maybe that's why he says marry me later because he's feeling guilty about <laughs> the sexual encounter he just had with this girl and he feels like he has to make right, you know. Yes. Yeah, I can see that. But you're right, and when you said marry, you know, that line is kind of jarring. Yeah, it is. For me it is. Yeah, it comes out seemingly comes out of nowhere because he's yeah. just trying to woo her early in the song and then oof, okay. That escalated fast. All right, so the next section of lines, which is I'm just gonna read through all of them and this is how the song ends Mm -hmm. girl don't you ever get lonely sometimes girl girl don't you ever don't you ever want someone 
Don't you ever want someone just to talk to? Well, you can talk to me, baby. I'm, I'm a good listener. You know what else? You know what else I am? You know what else I am? I'm a good kisser, too. Like, he repeats that several times. Like, he's mm-hmm. this, this, this uh, really uh, interesting answer. Like, <laughs> somebody keeps asking, you know what else I am? You're like, oh, God, what is he going to say? <laughs> it's, I'm a good kisser, too. Come here. Closer. Come here closer. And then uh, he says that a few more times. Your ass is so tight. <laughs> Shh. Come here. Come here. That's it. Right there. Darling, I'll never. He, I think he says don't talk. It's in parentheses. And I don't know if it's like really hard to hear as it's fading out. And that's why right. it's in parentheses. But yeah, so here he's asking a whole lot of questions again, trying to get, um, you know, answers from her, but not really wanting answers. He's just kind of asking some rhetorical questions. You know what else I am? I'm a good listener. You know, <laughs> come here. I don't you want just somebody to talk to? I could be that person you can talk to. So what else do you get from this time? Yeah, I, I, I don't know that I get anything more from it. I mean, um, but I, I like the way it's delivered. Um, and if I can, I'm going to switch gears for just a second and just talk. And I, I know this is a lyrics podcast, and that's primarily what we're focusing on. But when you when you dig into the music and musicality of the song and we talked about the music itself the uh that kind of throbbing synth heartbeat in the in the kind of jangly higher pitch synth uh lead line um and the the other thing that's notable about the song is the backing vocals uh those layered backing vocals some of them come in um in repetition of what he just said some of them come in right underneath what he's saying it's you know simultaneously uh the prince's voice whether spoken or sung when it's layered it's just it's perfect it's great and it's it's that way in the song for me and and um additionally the way he delivers uh the lines and just adds a little bit more to each line with each spoken part is um clever and i you know if if i'm just thinking of it in terms of the song um, in terms of, you know, this whole section where he's just sort of speaking to the woman, um, it's kind of cute. If I'm thinking in, in terms of the set, the what's been happening before we get to the section in terms of sex and the fact that before we get to the section where he starts speaking to her, they're, they're ramping it up. They haven't even had intercourse yet. They, she's just been playing with herself. If, if that's the interpretation we go with, mm-hmm. then maybe right here, even though he's talking, Maybe they aren't. Maybe this is it. Maybe they're having sex now. And if you look at it that way, if they're in the middle of having sex during this section, then it's almost like every time he delivers the line, don't you ever want someone, don't you ever want someone just to bring it justice by speaking it. But the way he does it in the song, it's almost like he's thrusting every time he says the line. And he just gives her a little bit more with each thrust. Yeah. And the yeah. next, the next section too. You know what? You know what else? You know what else I am. So anyway, I get I, that's a takeaway for me. Whether or not it, it kind of hits home for others, I don't know. But you know, the your ass is so tight. You know, girl, you've got an ass like I've never seen. He's an ass man. What can I say? Um, <laughs> well, you know what else? I think uh, there's also parallels then to take that to uh, another level with Lady Cab Driver in that mm-hmm. section, of Lady Cab Driver, because. You know, that's that's kind of like how he when he has sex on, you know, on recording, you know, the simulated for the music, it's he uses like the same sim- or a similar style of um, of line delivery mm-hmm. for that to kind of uh, indicate to the listener that that's what you're supposed to be imagining is happening at this moment. Like in Lady Cab Driver is very overt. You know, there's no question that's what's happening there. Um, this one, obviously it's, but more subtle if that's what we are going with for sure. But it does make sense because the line delivery here in this last section, as it, you know, closes, the song closes is it's almost like he's, uh, I don't want to say a babbling idiot, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, because he keeps repeating himself. And yeah. I think it's just like, uh, a, a, a way for him to express like he's talking but he's also kind of like half concentrating on what he's saying and half concentrating on what he's doing and so it's not easy to like you know to walk and chew gum it's like it's not easy to have a conversation and fuck so um maybe that's what it's kind of trying to convey to us as the listener is like this is 
a, a difficult conversation to listen to because it's a conversation that, or it's, it's a one-sided conversation again, as usual with songs, but it's just something that it's hard to um, pinpoint because it seems like it's so stunted. Like he finished, he doesn't finish his sentences, you know, doesn't finish his thoughts. Mm-hmm. And before then he has to repeat himself because he lost his train of thought again. So mm-hmm. why does he keep losing his train of thought? Well, I think we might have a I have a clue at least in this in one interpretation of it. Yes, I've lost my train of thought. So. Yeah, no, I think we've uh, <laughs> I think we've had plenty to talk about with girl. Which, yeah, as I mentioned, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised that we had this much to talk about with this B side. I really didn't foresee this, and that's that's cool that you know we've gone on over an hour. So we'll want to wrap it up here soon. But yeah, that we've gone on as long as we've had to talk about um a b-side that is titled girl which is like a super generic name for a song <laughs> right so generic that he gave a song to the time already titled that earlier and then he's like yeah you know like i said i'll do one for myself now uh, or maybe it was just a matter of the fact that he it was originally called boy and he just needed to switch it if he was going to record it for himself right There's no way around it um so he just he flipped the the genders and everything else stayed the same we don't know at least not at this time in you know late 2020. So I think with that, uh, we've probably covered girl as much as the two of us can do without. We're at the end. Know, woman's perspective. I need to excuse, uh, hold on. I'll get you a towel. <laughs> <laughs> now I gotta wipe my brow. Yeah, you're right. It's been, <laughs> it's been a steamy one for sure, um, and I wasn't anticipating that. So that's cool. That's cool. We had a different kind of unique discussion about this song. And I will probably never listen to this song the same way again, for what it's worth. All right, Todd, um, do you have any final thoughts about the song Girl before we sign off? No, I mean, like I said, I'll just repeat what I said at the the start. Not a song I go to very often, but it's a good listen. It really is. And when I, my, uh, one of my favorite playlists, though, you know, that I've made for myself uh, over the course of time as I've collected things is um, my 12 inch playlist. You know, everybody's probably got one of these, right? Mine simply called 12 Inches of Prince. Take it as you will. And when it, when it falls in line right after America, it's, it's a little bit, as the word you used earlier, jarring. It's you know, coming off that 20-minute jam. Yeah. Um, but it's a good listen. It's, um, it's a nice uh, change of pace almost. And yeah, I think it, it's a little bit out of place for me, um, but uh, as far as the, the era, um, but I like it. Um, I also want to just say a quick off topic a little bit, since I had the opportunity, if you don't mind, nope. um, I want to give you props and uh, all the others. And I'll only name two because they sort of are the, the originators of the whole thing, but I don't want to leave anybody out. But uh, DJ Um and Edgar Cruz for putting together the, 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 um, uh, the tweet series. My gosh, they've been great. Uh, oh, and I know you yeah. participated in the sign of times and um, uh, man, just terrific props to everybody. And I also want to give a shout out because Dwayne was kind enough to take the time to respond to my tweet or my messages earlier. Um, he said, jokingly, of course, but I was going to do it anyway. He said, make sure you mention my, my book coming out. And so a little bit of news or maybe an update, not news. Um, I guess he's working on coming, coming to the home stretch on his um, next book, uh, which I'm sure everybody listening knows about. But just as a heads up, the studio sessions for the parade and sign of the times area. Uh, the book will be out in May, according to Dwayne. I think he had hoped it would be out sooner, but he said May. So um, anyway, look forward to that. Dwayne is a, um, I mean, he's, I use his books like textbooks. I go through and pick out information I might not have known otherwise. So thanks to him. And yeah. thanks to you for doing this. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate you having me. Oh, yeah, thanks. Thanks. You're, you're welcome, Todd. And And thank you for the kind words about the, the Prince Twitter threads that we've been doing. Yeah. Um, on that on that um, social media platform, uh, I, I have a lot of fun doing them. They're they're a lot of work. Uh, you yeah, just, I mean, I and I I had um, I did. You got the look from Silent Times this last mm-hmm. time, and that's not a song that has a lot of depth to it. <laughs> no offense, right. you got the look. Right. It doesn't have a lot of depth to it. So the guy, the 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 folks who did songs like, as deep as like uh, if I was your girlfriend or. Um, you know, forthcoming a door and sign of the times song. They had to put a lot more work into theirs. I mean, we all put a lot of work into them, and so I just appreciate you um, acknowledging that 
and I will definitely pass on because I know I'm pretty sure that Edgar and, and DJM listen to the podcast, so they'll they'll hear that thank you and that shout out. But I'll also make sure to pass it on to them directly as well. Oh. Um, I'm sure. I mean, obviously, you can do that as well, Todd. You're sure. On social media platforms yep. and, and segueing into that, mm-hmm. where can people find you on social media? So um, I have two uh, Twitters that I use pretty regularly. The one that I sort of want to highlight for folks is uh, PRN underscore forever on Twitter. That's my Prince only um, Twitter feed. So I focus on everything. No, well, not just Prince, but mostly Prince and music. Um, and Cause that's my, um, that's my wheelhouse as far as just uh, item of interest. So anybody can reach me there, send me a sh- sh- note, um, send me news, and look for mine because I'm always tweeting about Prince and, and good music. So, so there you go. Thank you for being my guest again. Always appreciated. And I guess thanks to everybody. You can find me. Uh, I've been your host, Jason Brenninger, and you can find the Press Rewind Pod on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook using that handle. And I also recently launched a Discord. And so to find the um, <clears throat> the link to the Discord, the Press Rewind Podcast Discord will be in the show notes. And it's also on my various social media platform bio pages as well. So you can find it there. Lots of places you can look for it if you want to um, dig into uh, uh, the Discord and, and have conversations, real-time conversations about Prince and Prince lyrics and the podcast or whatever you want to talk about. Um, it's So it's an open platform for that kind of discussion, real-time discussion. So thanks again, Todd. Until next time, goodbye, everyone.